Hey guys, it's Alexander from 50 Folds. Today we're going to talk about something really important, and that's achieving your dreams, your goals. So what do you want to do? You want to build a big, successful startup, right? So how do you do that? Well, you have a great vision, which attracts and you retain amazing people. Then you help set them big goals and track their performance to achieve them, right? And you keep doing that until you get to IPO or you sell to Google or Facebook. Now, Google, Facebook, Skype, these are all really successful companies. They obviously did something, right? Right? Now, I think reinventing the wheel is highly overrated. You have so much stuff to do, and 75% of all startup is just the same thing. So why don't we just copy what works and implement that in your startup and see what happens? Now you're probably wondering uh, what works. Well, I'm going to tell you, and better yet, I've made a sheet which is going to do this all with you. There's no real thinking you're going to do other than how you're going to apply it. So there's three key principles that we're going to be dealing with. Let's start with the first one. These are OKRs, Objective Key Results. These were invented at Intel and then popularized by Google. What you do is you set your objectives, which are big, ambitious goals, and you set key results, which are qualitatively assessed over, say, a quarter. Now, that's the first thing we're going to do. The next thing is our PPPs, which is your progress, your plans, and your problems. Now, done on a daily basis, I call this the startup stand-up. Every day, everyone gets around in a circle when you're a small team, and says, here's what I did, here's what I'm going to do today, and here are the blockers or the problems that I have that I'd love some help with. Okay, when we do this on a regular basis, I call it the PPPs. All right, so here's what I did last week, here's what I'm going to do this week, and here are some problems that I have or dependencies that I have that I would love the team to help me try and solve, if you can. The final one are your KPIs, Key Performance Indicators. Now, hopefully, I don't really have to explain what these are. These are your key numbers that you're tracking, right? So these are something that you should be looking at very, very regularly. And you might think, well, my OKRs are sort of like squiffy, qualitative stuff, which we don't need to care about. Well, you do and you should. And that's why I put the KPIs and the OKRs together in one place. So people are forced to have to keep looking at it until they become a regular habit. I've made one sheet, it's in Google Sheets, so you can provide access to it for your whole team and everyone can see what everyone in the company is doing, which ensures great communication. But you know what managers and founders really love? It's updates without having to do any work. So one really cool thing I've done in this is your PPPs will be emailed to you every single week at Friday at 6 p.m. And the coolest thing is, it's so ridiculously easy to do. So now what we're going to do is we're going to jump in the sheet and I'm going to show you exactly how it works. If you want details, I've written a really long 6,000 word blog on this entire topic, which will give you some more nuances and details and best practices for how you should use this. So this video is just going to be on actually using and filling in this spreadsheet. If you don't really want to read the whole thing. Does that sound cool? Let's get down to it then. I assume that you've got the spreadsheet from uh, the link that's on the website. If you haven't, click on the right hand side and you'll see a little pretty picture. That's where you're going to get the link for this sheet. Now you're going to open it up and you're going to save your own version of this. So that's yours and you can edit it and no one else will be able to see it, right? Because it's going to be your important confidential information. So make sure you save that on your own drive and have your own version. Okay. So you'll see there's a little guide here. Feel free to delete it or remove my stuff if you want, but it'll have some basics about what you're trying to do. Now, let's just get start using it, all right? And you'll be able to do it super quickly. The first thing you're going to do is say, what week are you actually starting doing this whole process? So we're currently in week 37. So if you're going to start this, say, next week, you would just type in 38 here and so on. Right, And that'll set the first column for your OKR and KPI and your PP sheet. You can see them here. All right, week 37. Week 37, because we set it as week 37. Cool. All you need to do to change that is just type in a number from 1 to 52, depending on the week that you're in.
Now, the model automatically knows the current week, and so it'll adjust automatically depending on that. And these little arrows will help everyone to know what week they should be filling in the data. Cool, right? So once you just type that in, you're going to want to set up who are going to get email updates every week. So let's just say you're a small company and there's like three of you. So maybe it's just Alexander or 50 volts who's going to get the update. So you type in Alexander and the email. Let's say it's Olivia. So it'll be, you know, Olivia at startup.com. Congratulations. So that's all you need to do so that Olivia is now going to receive emails too. Cool. We'll just get rid of that now. So now if you want to put in all your staff into here, all you need to do is literally type in the names here. If you happen to have a smaller company, just type in no staff and suddenly you can now be a five person company. And Alexander doesn't need to get these updates anymore. So you just set them as no. Now to change who is going to get reporting, they'll say, well, let's say Ava uh, doesn't want to get it from Olivia. She doesn't want to have her own one, but she wants to get one from Isabella. Then you just type in yes. Congratulations. Now Ava's going to get one from Aurelia and Isabella. Uh, but it was a mistake here, so no more. See? Now Alex is going to get them from everybody. And if you don't want to get them these stuff, you just set them as no. Right? Super duper easy. That's all you have to do to actually set up the sheet. Now we're going to get into actually how you're going to use it. So we'll open up our OKR and KPI sheet. You'll see that automatically everyone's names are populated in here. Okay. Aurelia, Olivia, Ava, Sophia, Isabella. All right. So if you're the 20th person, it'll go all the way to the bottom where you can see number 20, which is currently no staff. And that's where you would type in your information. Cool. So how are these OKRs set up? Well, objective, key result. Complicated, huh? So you type in, my objective is to get to 10 million ARR. But by when? And did you do that? So you type in the target date that you want to do it and when you've actually finished it. Uh, to type in the key results, you'd say, well, I want monthly growth of 20%, retention rate of 35%, 20,000 installs per month. Those are my key results for me to get to my 10 million ARR. And these are always quantitative, so there's no subjectivity in them. So all you need to do and then to track those is you type in, right, I got 20% growth in week 37. I got a 32% retention rate. I only got 7,000 uh, installs, so there's a bit of a problem here. Maybe we should try and figure out what's going on. Uh, my second OKR is going to be increase the number of stores by 20%. How am I going to do that? Well, I'm going to select 40 new franchise candidates by March. I got 10 so far. I'm going to train 30 of them before June. I'm going to sign contracts with 25 of them, and I'm going to open 20 stores before December. All right. So those would be my key results so that I would achieve my objective. Again, you just type them in here. Okay. You'll see that there's no like special formatting or complexity in here. I try to make this really simple, it's like a total no brainer. Okay. So if you want to say, all right, well, this is the new key results going to be, I don't know, drive growth, 20%, whatever. Okay. You just literally just type in 20 and add a percent and congrats. You now have that in there, there. Okay. Simple. At the end of your quarter, you can see here, there's a summary. So have you exceeded? Have you underperformed? I've tried to make this really simple. Um, normally OKRs have a scoring system from zero to hundred percent or zero to one. Google does it in that fashion. I haven't included scoring just because it's kind of more work and also makes the sheet complicated. And I know people don't like complicated until they're, you get that escalation of commitment and they want to use it more. If you wanted to, you could just change summary to score and you could type in the scoring here so people could review their performance for that. Okay. I've just tried to keep this bit qualitative, which I know is subjective, but it's just easier for you to get started with. Now there are, there is one for each quarter. So you get it for the whole year. See so two, three, four. So you'll have four cycles in this sheet saved. And hopefully at the year, year one, you've grown and you might be able to migrate into something that is more robust for your needs. Okay, so that was your OKRs. KPIs are super easy to do. This is it's a really ghetto sheet. You're allowed to have up to 10 KPIs 
really you shouldn't really have more than five. Marketing people may have more, but you know, up to you. So set what they are. So you have like, for example, it could be your CTRs, your clicks, your conversions, CPI, CPM. And then every week you just type in what is uh, your actual numbers for these things and you can just track them and they're with your OKRs. So it's, it encourages you to have one place where you can review all this. And again, everyone, uh, every member of your staff is in here. So everyone can see everyone's OKRs and their KPIs and what they're working on. So that creates, you know, some really good visibility and communication all within one sheet. That's it. Next, we're going to go through your PPPs, which is your progress, your plans, and your problems. Now, at the top, we have Santa's naughty and nice list. Completed their PPP this week. Have not completed their PPP this week. So you can see Aurelia and Olivia have. Ava, Sophia, and Isabella haven't. So now everyone can see who has and who hasn't. Just try and get people to comply. Now, there is no no real complexities in this. I've tried to, to make the sheet do all the thinking for you. The only thing staff have got to do every week is literally just type in what the progress, the plans, and the problems are. Okay, The sheet will automatically know if people have completed it for each part. So what's your progress? Progress was I fixed the AdWords bug. What are your plans? I'm going to implement a marketing scheme for driving more discount customers. And my problems, uh, retargeting is not working on the CJ channels, and so on. Please help me. Right? You should potentially have up to five bullet points within this, um, but just focus on what's really important. So if you only have one, that's fine, but just keep it uh, concise and to the point. Don't write an essay, which no one wants to read. Uh, if you're looking for more tips in this, the blog has got like a whole bunch for you to think about. Um, now, let's say you're Olivia. Uh, you just, again, type these in here. The arrow will tell you what month to do that. You'll see Ava is not feeling very motivated. She hasn't done very much. She's thinking of leaving, and she hasn't filled in her problems, which means that uh, it says she hasn't filled it in. But all if you type in is my problems is I hate this place. She may still have problems, but at least her sheet's been filled in for you, right? And this week has been marked completed. That's all you need to do to manage your PPPs. Um, you should review them every week, maybe at the start of the week and at the end of the week with everyone, and maybe mention them with your startup stand-up every single day. How you do it is up to you, but that's all you need to do to manage your PPPs now. So I told you about this cool feature, which is um, the update emails that you're going to get. And we set here who and the email and what reports they're going to get from which person. Um, this here will be featured at the top of your email. And this will drive an automated template, which I've created, which will pull the information in and format things really nicely. This is only sound complicated. Let me just show you. So this is what an email is going to look like when it comes in, at least the top part. Hey. Alexander, which is the name. This is the PPP update for week 37. The people who have completed their PPP this week are Aurelia, Olivia, and Ava. People who haven't are Sophia and Isabella. And then we've pulled in for the people who have, which is Aurelia, Olivia, and Ava. See Aurelia, Olivia, their progress, their plans, and their problems. So all that text that they typed in is now in there for you. And that'll be sent to your email box every single week on Friday at 6 p.m. Now let's say, like I got a call today actually, someone wants to change that to be on a Saturday. How would you do that? Well, this is gonna seem a little bit complicated. There's also a blog to explain how you can change this, but you just go to Tools, Script Editor, and up will post um, the script editor here. And you'll see here, there is a scheduling trigger, okay? You click that. Let's say you want to change it from Friday to Saturday. Just click that. You want to change the time from 6 to 8 p.m. Boom. Click Save. And that's all done. Let's say for some reason you want to send your PPPs on a daily basis. How would you do that? Glad you asked. Change it from Week Timer to Day Timer. Now every single day from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. you will get an email sent to you extracting from those PPPs. Now, we're just going to leave that as it is. 
And if you want to understand all the code that's in here and how it works and how you can customize it, there is a blog. Um, feel free to read that. Okay. Now, the one other thing that I want to show you now is if there's an issue with it that your emails are being sent at a funny time, the reason is because I'm in London and my time zone is set at GMT. So you have to know what time zone your spreadsheet is actually in. How do you know that? Simples. Go to File, click here on Spreadsheet Settings, then you can see Time Zone. So click whatever your time zone is. If you want, you can also change your country locale. Up to you. But hopefully that all of this works now. Okay? Don't touch anything in this spreadsheet. Um, it is pretty complicated, and if you do something wrong, it'll break and well, that's kind of your problem, but I'm just warning you, this big yellow thing which says do not touch this is there for a reason, okay? All the goodies are just in the simple sheets that I showed you, and the complicated stuff gets done by elves at the bottom of this spreadsheet, okay? Now, that's the spreadsheet. It's going to help you do your OKRs, your KPIs, and your PPPs. It's going to send you an email every week. I hope that was really useful for you. If you enjoyed it, Please feel free to share with your other startup friends. Uh, let them get the value of it too. This is all free just for you guys founders. So, you know, put the word out if you want it. Um, if you like this video, feel free to subscribe. And I'll chat to you soon. Cheers, guys. Bye.